Hi everybody and welcome to the third racetrack builder video. This one is about Bezier curves. This is a new feature in version 1.2. Uh, it's based on the cubic Bezier equation which is commonly found in drawing programs and animation programs for defining curve parts. Now the Bezier has the advantage that you can specify the end point of the curve exactly and you can also specify the direction at that end point and it will create a curve from the start point to the end point with those properties. Now this gives you a bit of extra control but it's also useful because the end point once specified will not move in world space regardless of any changes you make to the curves prior to the Bezier curve and this can be quite useful to lock down parts of the track so that they will remain in the same place and you can go back and edit the curves prior to it without it affecting the ones immediately after the Bezier curve. And finally the Bezier curve solves the problem of creating a seamless looped racetrack. In fact it makes it very very easy. So to illustrate this I've created a simple scene with a few objects and a racetrack that threads around those objects. And as part of the scene I've created this little tunnel and what I want to do is run the racetrack through that tunnel. So previously I'd have to create a couple of curves and I'd have to make one of them try to move the track towards the tunnel and then the other one try to align the track in the direction that in the direction of the tunnel and then I'd have to tweak things manually with a lot of trial and error to try and get it so that it goes through the right point and faces in the right direction. But now that we have a Bezier curve, we can use one of those instead. So I'm basically going to add a curve, and then we change the type to Bezier. Now arc is just a previous type of curve, the one with the angles and the length that defines the shape. And Bezier curves are optional as well. You can use them or you can just use the old curve type and you can mix and match as you want and they will mix and match pretty much seamlessly with the other type of curve. So you can see with the Bezier curve we have these handles here we've got a rotate handle and a movement handle and we can use those to rotate the direction of the curve at the end point and to move the end point to another position. So that gives us the control that we need. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to switch this to wireframe so that I can see beyond that building that gets in the way. We'll just line up the tunnel there. Here we go. And then I can now move the end point so it lines up in that direction. We have a look from the top as well. The angle needs a slight tweak, so place it there. And we'll update the curve. It's about where we want it, although we need to flatten out the gradient here. Let's update that again. Oops. So I'll add another curve. Um, once you switch to Bezier, if you add another curve immediately after, it will give you a Bezier curve as well. I'm just going to switch it back to Arc. I don't need a Bezier. Just extend that out a bit. And we can see it's a little bit crooked, so I'll go back to the Bezier curve where we can set the angle at the end of the curve. And we'll just tweak it a bit. And so just like that we've got our racetrack passing through the tunnel. I'll 
put some cross beams on just to make it interesting. And let's give it a go. So that was pretty straightforward. Uh, I mentioned that the Bezier curves essentially lock down the curves that come afterwards because they always go through the same point in space regardless of what you do to the previous curves. And we can um, demonstrate this by changing the lead up curve for example. Now in previous version of the racetrack builder, once you've got everything aligned carefully, if you went back and you changed the curves prior to it, those changes would flow forward and then you'd lose all your careful alignment. But um, because we've got a Bezier curve, and the Bezier curve said this is where I end, then that essentially is protecting that content from those ch previous changes. Okay, so let's carry on and create a loop to racetrack. So just add a curve at the end. Uh, tweak it up a little bit. I might switch back to asphalt poles. Get a 45 degree curve. Add a couple more. I might want to go down a bit. Whoops, it's up. Down. So shorten these as well. Looks alright. Here's a straight bit. Get us in the vicinity of the start. Right, okay, so now we want to create a closed racetrack circuit. And the Bezier curve gives us a tool to do this, because essentially we just need a curve that ends up exactly where the racetrack starts, going in exactly the direction of the racetrack. So we could do this manually, but it sounds like an easy job for a computer to do, so we have a function, click on the racetrack, and we just click create closed circuit and it gives us a nice seamless looking racetrack now there's likely to be a bit of mesh overlap and this is because the meshes when laid end to end to build the racetrack are unlikely to have exactly the same length as the curves themselves so when racetrack builder lays out the last mesh because it doesn't support chopping meshes, it will lay out a portion of it that matches the last curve, and then it has to do something with the remaining piece. And in this case, it will align it to the first curve of the racetrack. And this is because the racetrack has a setting mesh overrun, and it's currently set to loop. And Racetrack Builder will automatically set it to loop when you create a closed circuit, so you get this seamless effect. Now it's worth noting that it doesn't align the mesh exactly to the first curve. There's a very tiny Y offset. And this is to avoid Z fighting, which can happen if the original curve is flat. In this particular case, the original curve is curving a bit, so there's probably going to be no Z fighting. But we have the Y offset anyway. Okay, so I want to show you how the Bezier curve can be used to essentially lock down pieces of the racetrack so that you can edit prior curves without it disturbing everything that you've carefully laid out. So let's say we want to keep the racetrack from this point onwards 
and prevent it from being disturbed. So we'll click on this curve, we'll select that curve, and we can just set it to Bezier. And now we want to edit a previous curve. We can go ahead and start making modifications. We want to move it around this house perhaps. A slight elevation perhaps. Set some more curves. So I'll change that to asphalt without the poles, just so that it doesn't break things. And we'll put the poles back for this one. Now sometimes Racetrack Builder does get a bit confused and will lose some of the meshes, so the easiest thing to do is just do an update to whole track once in a while. And we're back. So the important thing is that this curve that we switch to Bezier, it still ends in exactly the same position, facing exactly the same direction. So all of these curves that we laid out earlier, they don't get disturbed at all, but we were able to go ahead and make a modification to the previous track. And likewise, because the final curve that it creates to close the track is a Bezier curve, it means that we can go editing other curves without breaking our closed circuit. So for example, let's insert a curve here, make a nice straight one, and let's create a loop. Just to be sure, I'll do an update whole track. Now the reason it's a good idea to an update whole track is because Racetrack Builder has a algorithm for updating a curve uh, efficiently. And it does that by updating the actual curve, the meshes for that curve, but it will reposition the meshes for the curves afterwards. And that works pretty well or at least it did work pretty well for the previous versions of Racetrack Builder because changing the angles of previous curves would not affect the angles or the length of the curves that follow afterwards so they only really needed to be moved rather than regenerating the whole meshes. However, once you have a Bezier curve there changing the previous curves will change its start point which can then change its length which then interferes with the offsets of all the meshes that are generated along its path. So that means it won't always necessarily get it perfect by just repositioning the 
curve objects. However, uh, we still keep this algorithm because it's fast. You don't have to wait for it to rebuild all the meshes for the entire track or from that point of the track onwards. And it gives you a good picture of what the track is going to look like. But it does mean that before you actually use a track, like if you want to actually drive on it, it's a good idea to just select the racetrack and click update whole track and make sure everything is calculated from scratch properly. Okay, so that's how you use Bezier curves, how you can use them to align content exactly where you need it, how you can create seamless closed circuit racetracks, and how you can use it to protect curves so that you can go back and edit the track prior to those curves without it interfering with what you've already set up. I hope this video was useful. Thanks for watching.